everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have five tips on Friday for you all. And I can't believe that this is actually my 25th five tips on Friday. So I hope you guys enjoyed this helpful video and let's just get right into it. Okay, so the first tip is that do you love lining your waterline with eyeliner, but you have really sensitive eyes and every time you line your eye with um, liner, it burns your eyes really bad and you have really sensitive eyes and you're like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I like lining my eyes, but it's not letting me. Well, every time you use the eye pencil, make sure that you sharpen the pencil. So whenever you're going to use this and you're gonna line your eye make sure that you sharpen it anytime that you use it I use this trick all the time every time I'm ready to use my eyeliner pencil I go ahead and sharpen it because it does not like um stick your eye doesn't um poke yourself in your eye and by sharpening it it's not going to um, poke you so you just want to sharpen it every time that you're about to use it. I know you might think oh yeah I don't feel like doing that but it's really gonna make you be able to wear the eyeliner on your waterline and not have you stick your eyes and also, once a week, you want to make sure that you um, clean your sharpener with you want to sharp uh, you want to clean your sharpener every week some, with some hand sanitizer and let it soak for there. So just put a little bit of the hand sanitizer onto the cotton swab, onto a cotton swab, and then just let it go onto the cotton swab and let it stick there for a few minutes. So as you guys can see, I have a little bit of hand sanitizer. By doing so, it's going to reduce the risk of getting an eye infection and burning your eyes every time that you sharpen your pencil. It's going to reduce that because most of the time you get the germs from your um, sharpener and you don't really think about washing this off. But every time that you put your pencil back in there, you're getting all the germs that you had on your pencil before. And it's going to reduce the risk of having eye infection and burning your eyes every time you... you okay, so the next tip is are you trying to achieve that perfect nude lip? And I I can understand myself because I always try to achieve that perfect nude lip, but nothing works. I can never achieve that perfect nude lip that I always want. Well, I found the perfect trick for you all that's going to create the best um, nude lip that you ever thought of creating a new lip before and actually I have and I know a lot of other a, a lot of people have different complexions and they have um, somebody might have a little bit of a darker or a uh, whiter or something like that and they have a little bit of a lighter foundation of um, complexion and every nude lip won't work perfect on you so you guys can create the perfect nude lip for you just from using a little bit of some your foundation so you guys can just go ahead and take your foundation and put it all over your lips so you can take it with a sponge and then or your finger and put it you want to layer it together onto your lips so now I have the foundation on my lips um, and this is the perfect new foundation. Whatever foundation you use basically every day is the foundation that you want to use onto your lips to use this trick. Then what you want to do is you want to take your pink lipstick. Oh yes, pink lipstick. This is going to create the perfect new lip. Can you, this is my hot, this is my pink lipstick. And this is Pink for Friday lipstick from MAC. And this is from the Nicki Minaj um, Pink for Friday. And that's what it looks like. And you just want to go ahead and blot it right on. Just like that. I blot it on. Not too much. And now look, that is the perfect new lip. It is so pretty and really this really simple to have to create that. And you're not wasting any time. Do you see how fast that took me to get the perfect new lip? Okay, so the next tip is do you love to swim in the summer or anytime but you hate with the cold? I have a little tip for you guys. Help keep the chlorine from damaging your hair. All you do is do a few little things from your kitchen. Okay, so I will post the recipe in what you need on um, the ingredients in the downer and I'll also tell you guys right now. Okay, so what you need is you need um, some olive oil. So you just need some olive oil, one egg, okay, and a cucumber, okay? Half a cup of olive oil and a quarter cup of cucumber. Then what you're going to do is you're going to put it all into a bowl. So you're just going to go ahead and put it all into the bowl. So you're just going to put the cucumber. I'm going to zoom in so I can show you guys. So you're just going to go ahead and put the cucumber right in there. And then you just want to put some of the olive oil in there. And you want to put um, a half a cup of this in there. So you're just then you're just going to take your egg, one egg, you just want to put in there also. So just one egg. And then you're going to whisk it up. So then you have a really odd mixture. So 
just mixing, mixing, mixing. Blue. So they have a mixture that looks like this. Then spread the mixture ac evenly across your hair. So you just want to move it, spread it all across your hair evenly and leave that on for about 10 minutes. You want to do this once a month to help remove the chemicals and the chlorine from your hair. Okay, so the next tip is did you apply a little bit too much foundation and now you look like a big cake and somebody can take a bite out of you and like, girl, I don't want to look like a cake. And you're like, hmm, what's de for dessert? Your face goes all ganky. <laughs> well, you don't want it to look like that. But all you have to do to get rid of that really nice cakey, really ugly cakiness is to take a sponge like this, just a circle sponge, and put a drop, few drops of water on it, and then put it right across your face, just like this. Wherever you put a little bit too much foundation, the damn sponge would soak up any of the extra foundation that makes you look extra cakey. When you have a little bit too much foundation on it, or you like did an overboard on foundation, just use this trick and you won't look like a cake. Okay, so the last tip is that in my makeup collection, you guys saw this really, really cute brush roll. And you saw this really cute brush roll. And you guys are like, I, how do you make that, Ellie? I want to learn how to make that brush roll. And you guys, it is so cute. And it holds all your brushes really nicely. Um, so it just looks like this. And I have all my MAC brushes in there right now. Just like brushes in it right there and they're all just sticking out like that and they're, it's really fun to make. All you do is knead a um, cloth napkin just like this. So let me show you how, you how you can make this really cute brush roll in less than 10. Okay, so what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and take the cloth napkin and I'm just going to turn it over just like this. Just like that. So I just have my cloth napkin right there. Then what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and take a roller like this and you just want to go and measure 12 inches like that. So you just want to measure so you just want to measure 12 inches on each side and then you just want to mark it with a um you just want to mark it with a piece of chalk. So you're just going to a uh, fabric chalk. So you just want to mark it just like that. Then what you're going to do is you are going to fold up where you marked it at. So you just want to fold it up like that. So then you have a fold in it, like that. So then you have a, it's kind of starting out to be a brush roll. Then what you want to do is you just want to pin the sides. You just want to pin the sides right there with a pin so then they stay shut. Then you want to sew up right here. You can either hand sew it or um, use a sewing machine. I used a sewing machine, um, but you can also hand sew it with some a needle, with some thread and a needle. With the sewing kit from last week, you can use that. And then what you want to do is you just want to take some chalk, some um, fabric chalk again, and just estimate the size of a brush and just go up and mark it off. Of, and I wanted to use a colorful one. I used a brown one, as you guys saw from my other one. I used a brown one for my brush roll, but I wanted to use a colorful one so then I could show you guys what I'm doing. Then, when you, then after you have all the marks, then you just want to sew up where the marks are with some um, thread and a needle also. Again, you just want to thread sew right up here. It may sound confusing, but it's really simple. And then you want to leave the middle part right up here. You just want to leave that middle part right there open so then a brush can fit right down there. Um, and then I went all the way till a middle part and I went all the way and kept on making lines. So I kept on just making lines, uneven ones because um, some brushes are bigger than others. So I just kept on going and making lines just like that. And then I just sewed all of those lines as you guys can see as at the blue. I just kept on sewing all of those lines and then I actually stopped right in the middle right here. And I stopped right there, and then I left a huge patch opened up just like this. And I just left a huge patch like this, and I left it so then I could slip my buffer brush in there. I even put my sharpener in there, and I put stuff in there so then I don't, um, 
so then I can have room to put like my buffer brush and all that stuff. Then what I did was I just sewed all it up and then you can put a tie a piece of sew a piece of ribbon onto it right there. And this is just green so that it matches it. And I you can either sew it onto there right there, two pieces of it, or you can just tie it around once you roll it up. So let me show you guys how you roll it up. You just roll it up just like this. And then you take your piece of ribbon and you just tie it around there. That is how easy it is. Look at how easy that is. And now you have a gorgeous brush roll in a few minutes. And you can see I actually used a sewing machine and I just stitched it up. And then right here is the part where I didn't have any. And then I just stitched it on the side. And then I added a piece of ribbon right there so that I can just roll it up. And then I have a brush roll in less than a few minutes. Then you just go ahead and roll up the brush roll just like so. So you just want to roll it up just like so and then tie it and I actually have brown here because I think brown is very versatile and I bring this every time I go on vacation and my or go away and bring my brushes now my sister like Allie please make me one of those because she's like I want to use them I'm like no I have to put all my brushes in and she's like trying to put all her brushes in here because it protects your brushes and not makes you blue not makes you not be able to find them and they're all in one place all in a brush roll and you made it yourself and now I have to go and make my sister one because she's like Allie I want one of those I need one of those and it's just really simple and fun to make a brush roll out of a, a cloth napkin. You can buy a cloth napkin at Walmart, Target, all those places um, and they're really inexpensive and you spent nearly no money and you have a gorgeous brush roll and less than a f So that's it guys. All that is my 25th Bye to some Friday. Hope you guys enjoyed this helpful video and stay tuned for next week's great tips. Come more great tips coming your way. So you hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next video. Love you all so much. Bye.